Hello and welcome to Gradient Tutorials, your resource for quick videos to learn how to use Paperspace. This is part two of getting started with Gradient Workflows, where we will see how to create a custom workflow and demonstrate how GitHub integration can be used to trigger workflow runs. To do this, we'll be modifying the YAML file that was created automatically for part one, so make sure that you've completed part one of this tutorial before continuing forward. I recommend you open up the repo you made for part one and check that the file exists in the .gradient slash workflows folder. Here in part two, you will see how to clone our existing connected GitHub repository to our local machine, create empty data sets on gradient for the workflow, copy some text into the YAML file to create a new custom workflow, push that updated YAML file to our repository to GitHub and trigger a new workflow run, and then repeat that process once again with an added step. So to get started with all of this, first thing you want to do is clone the repo you made for part one to your local machine. And once that's done, go ahead and open up that repo in your preferred code editor. I'm going to be using VS Code today. And once you're in there, go ahead and open up the hidden repo.gradient slash workflows and go into stylegantu.yaml. For the next step, go back into your browser and use the link that I'll be providing in the description of this video to get the raw YAML file for the next stage of our creation process and copy all of the raw content in there and then paste it back into our original stylegantu.yaml file. Once you've done so, you should have a whole new workflow that looks like this. Before we save and push these changes to this YAML script, let's look at what we're actually changing. First thing I want to point out is this on section. You need to have this commented out for your workflow run to actually work. So make sure that you do that before you push your changes. Next. I want to talk about the three jobs that are currently not commented out. They are clone stylegan2 repo, get pre-trained model cats, and generate cat images pre-trained model. Fairly straightforward titles should give you an indication of what they all do, but in short, clone stylegan2 repo uses a C4 instance type, which is just a basic CPU machine, to clone the stylegan2 source code from NVIDIA's GitHub repo into a managed storage provider on Gradient. Next, get pre-trained model cats uses another C4 instance type to copy a pre-trained model of cats as a large pickle file over to Gradient. And finally, generate cat images pre-trained model uses a P4000 instance type to display images of cats generated using the pre-trained cats model. There are also two other jobs, get pre-trained model cars and generate car images pre-trained model which respectively use a C4 instance to copy a pre-trained model of car images and a P4000 instance type that displays images of cars generated using pre-trained cars model. By commenting these sections in and out, we can change the behavior of our workflow overall in a very significant way after each run, but more on that later. One thing I want to note as well is in job two, job two requires a data set and gradient storage to run properly as we can see here by this type data set with the re reference stylegan2-wsp-cats-pretrain-network. So we actually need to go create that. And we're also gonna make three more that we need to use for this entire workflow run. To do that, go into the gradient console and navigate to the data tab. I've got some pre-made ones here that we can ignore for now. Go up to the top right and click add, and then be sure to name your new, and then be sure to name your data set identically to what we saw in the YAML file. So in this case for job two, that would be here. Stylegan to WSP dash pre-train network. And we're gonna use the gradient managed storage provider. All right, now I've made that and I'm just gonna repeat this a few times for each of the different data sets that we need to instantiate. All right, and now we have our four new data sets 
that we can use for our workflow run. All right, now that we've made all of our changes and saved them, we're ready to actually run the workflow. So go ahead and open up your terminal and add back in the newly saved files and commit them to your repo. And make sure you have a relevant message and go ahead and push your changes. Once that's done, we can go to our GitHub, push the page and see that we've got our new push present there. And we click on this details, we can actually see that a workflow has been triggered. So let's go back into the GUI, go to our workflow from last week and see our new workflow run in process. So we've got our two jobs running in parallel here, clone style again to repo and get pre-trained model cats, which will both then run into generate cat images pre-trained model. As you can see, this is very different than our previous workflow. So our changes that we pushed were successful and our workflow is now correctly running on these new tasks that we've set for it. Once the workflow is completely finished, you can go ahead and click on that last job, the data tab, and then this folder here, and we can go ahead and see that we've got some nice cat pictures to enjoy, courtesy of our StyleGAN2 workflow. Now that that's done and you've seen how we can actually trigger a workflow run with just a GitHub commit, Let's look at adding some more variety with jobs four and five added back into our YAML script. To get started with that, reopen your IDE and navigate down to jobs four and five. So highlight this whole section and remove the comment out effect. Much like in jobs two and three, jobs four and five will get a pre-trained car model and then use that model to generate some images of cars. So very similar to the cats. All right, once you've finished making the changes by uncommenting out jobs four and five, you can go ahead and save the stylegan2.yaml script and go back into your terminal to add the changes to GitHub. So I'm adding in jobs four and five and push. All right, once that is complete, we can go back into the workflows GUI. And as you can see, our workflow is now running with each of these three jobs in parallel, performing some of the tasks that are needed for the secondary jobs to complete. They do this at the same time without interfering with each other, and this allows for really, really powerful connections of different CPU and GPU powered instances. Once these are both done, you can once again click on each of the jobs and go into the data tab to get the generated images. And with that, we are going to wrap up our tutorial series on working with, um, okay. And with that, we will wrap up our tutorial series on getting started with gradient workflows. By now, you should see how to work with the prefabricated templates and know how to write your own YAML scripts to create your own customized tasks within workflows. Be sure to try out some of our other templates like the awesome Adora web app to round out your experience and get the most out of using workflows. Thank you so much for listening and thank you for using Paperspace.